Welcome to New Game Plus. My name is Donald, replacing Tim whilst he is all the way to over here, whilst he is replacing Kirsty whilst she is away. How are you today, madam? Uh, uh, I'm feeling a bit emasculated because you've taken over the show. Yes, I really have. I am the host here this week, so I have all of the power, which means it is all toys all the time this week because we are mature, responsible adults. Yes. We have reviews of Disney Infinity. 2.0 Marvel superheroes. We have reviews of Skylanders Trap Team, and yeah, I suppose you can have the middle section. Yeah, uh, we haven't got any toys in the middle section, unfortunately, but we've got uh, some more coverage from Tokyo Game Show, and we've yeah. also got Planeswalker Plus. Cards are a kind of toy, aren't they? Yeah, just cardboard toys. Yeah, they could be <laughs> plastic toys, kind of like the Skylanders. And you know what? That's the perfect segue to our review of Skylanders Trap Team. It is that time of the year again. It is Skylanders season, which is why I'm joined by our Skylanders expert and obsessive Paul Hoops Hallahan from the Fourth Player Podcast to review Skylanders Trap Force. What do you think of this year's edition? Oh, look, Toys for Bob are back doing what they do absolutely yep. best, making great games with great components and magical Traptanium, Donald. Tra Traptanium? Yeah, the traps, the portal, you've seen it, you've played the game. Wait. So you pay attention to the score in the story in Skylanders? It's what Toys for Bob do well, mate. Oh, I'm just there for the new shiny figurines. And as well for Trap Force, these little things, these traps, which allow you to contain the various villains of the world to which you can play as them later. Yeah, so when your wildfire goes in and goes psh and smashes everything up, uh, you defeat the villain, he goes up into the yep. sky and transfers into your trap, and then you can play as your villain, including the amazing Pepper Jack, the best villain in the game. I'll take your word for it's that one. But the gameplay in Trap Force is probably some of the best that the series has offered, and there's just a lot of variety. There is just a lot, because the game itself is about double the length of past Islanders titles. It's absolutely massive. Toys for Bob have done a great job learning from Vicarious Vision and their previous games mm. to give us one of the most robust experiences in Skylanders but the problem we have is previously with elemental gates they've been locked off to eight different types of Skylanders now only trap masters are able to open gates so if you don't have one of every kind guess what you're not going to play the whole game I did the maths previously on just the amount of money that it takes to 100% these Skylanders titles for trap force that figure is way way above the previous editions and indeed, you could just sort of see the cynicism here, the sort of marketing nature that underpins the whole Skylanders franchise. The fact that you do need to go deep with all the figurines and all the traps to be able to see everything that has to offer. The worst part is your previous Skylanders collection, because yeah. I'm sure that if you're a parent, you would have your kid's Skylanders collection, or indeed your own Skylanders collection, that is made redundant by the requirements to have these trap masters, these new figurines to unlock everything. But in spite of that though, it's ultimately a shame because the game itself is pretty darn good. Oh, best Skylanders game that's been released by far. Nice to see, great callbacks, great callback mm. jokes, great use of your swap force, your minis, and all your other Skylanders are all forwards compatibility, something that Toys to Life games do so well. Yeah, the game is a good Skylanders game, but at the same time, four years running, all the figurines, it sort of does weigh on you. So that if you're going to get into it, you're going to have to go all in. Uh, that being said, we're more than happy to, I think that's fair to say. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're those yeah. guys. It's okay. See you again next year. <laughs> so, Tim, would you play Skylanders? Uh, I think I need some convincing because I love Spyro. PlayStation yep. 1, that was yep. fantastic. I never owned a PlayStation 1. I'd huh. always go to my cousins and play the crap out of Spyro. <laughs> and I'm but, sure they appreciated it. Uh, I think just having all the toys and having the base plays it's it's a lot of trouble for something that I'm not very passionate mm -hmm. about the little toy figurines okay let me uh, make a couple of compelling arguments for you how about now uh, no how about now mm, maybe hmm. <laughs> how about now no ah, yeah, that looks like um, the guy from Ratchet and Clank though how about now no how about <laughs> now <laughs> <laughs> no. It's kind of I like don't think, Kind of like, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to work though, no. Oh, okay. How about now? <laughs> no. Okay then. How about now? Now I'm here.
here right in front of the Sony booth. I uh, just got out of a preview for Sony's new VR bid into the VR race, Project Morpheus. Now, this is an interesting little headset. Uh, I got into a little tech demo uh, preview just behind doors just then, uh, where you actually had to ward off a shark underwater while you're in a cage, all barren and bruised by using a few pellets um, as well as a harpoon. Now, um, as far as the game goes, you actually have to control yourself uh, in the 3D space using the helmet while aiming uh, the harpoon using your PlayStation controller, not using your thumbstick, but actually using it in tandem with your headset uh, via actual physical movement. Uh, now, it was really, really cool to see because it was almost one for one, and it's amazing to see how far the technology has come in terms of VR. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it didn't actually go for long, and it was more of a tech demo than anything and not an actual full game. But it's, uh, it actually it stands by its point that um, Sony is really serious about VR, and I can't wait to see uh, what the future has in store for uh, Sony's VR and, uh, and their video games. Now we're here again outside of the Sony booth with Bloodborne. So this is from Software's latest title, the guys who made Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Um, awesome, awesome title, uh, he heavily awaited by both Western and Eastern gamers alike. Uh, so basically what it is, it's essentially, I, I hate to say this, but it is very much more Dark Souls with a larger emphasis on uh, attacking and less on defense. Now. Um, it does uh, have a bit, a bit of a different tone as opposed to the usual medieval tone that we uh, that, that's uh, commonly associated with Dark Souls. Instead, it takes more of like a Pennsylvania, a Transylvania tone, uh, much more like Van Helsing. So you do fight a lot more, a lot of more enemies, a lot more lynch mobs, uh, werewolves, and weird stray dogs who are most more than likely wet. Uh, so. The combat is actually really, really good. Um, it does uh, encourage a lot more uh, being, uh, being a little more ferocious than actually defensive. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, it's good that, that it uh, different, uh, distances itself from Dark Souls and Demon Souls. And I can't wait to play a lot more of it. Did play about 15 minutes and as usual, uh, in true Dark Souls fashion, I did die about two times. But it's all part of the experience and I can't wait to see it uh, hit until uh, next year. your favorite Final Fantasy soundtrack? Ooh, uh, I'd have to say Final Fantasy 1. Okay. It, uh, it added a lot of the iconic songs that have been consistently used throughout the Final Fantasy series and just constantly added upon. How about you? Mm. I'm a big fan of the Final Fantasy 10 soundtrack. It's just, it's beautiful, melodic, haunting, and the HD remaster from earlier this year is actually really good. And the great thing about it is I can play that soundtrack, or parts of it, plus parts of the Final Fantasy 1 soundtrack in Fear Troop and Final Fantasy Curtain Call for the 3DS. Yeah. So, Theatre Rhythm Curtain Call is a rhythm-based Final Fantasy-styled game in which you... There's little pigs, they fly across the screen, you hit them at the right times, there's sliding notes, basic rhythm game functions. However, it's the Final Fantasy appeal that really makes it an interesting and game. And it's a surprisingly complicated and deep RPG, which is weird to say for a rhythm game. Yeah, there's items, enemies, bosses... Characters, there's so many characters, all from the Final Fantasy franchise, and it really gives it a Final Fantasy appeal. There are specific songs that you play that have specific stages and monsters. It's just a really interesting game as a Final Fantasy game. And there's a lot of music to play for it. There's over 200 songs, and it takes every single song from the original Fear Trip, plus all the DLC from that game, plus new songs that added to this game, including songs from Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13, plus DLC for this game. Is it's, it's insane, and, and, yeah. and if anything, it's worth checking out for just the sheer volume of songs. Yeah, if you are a big Final Fantasy fan, then there's a very high chance that you played the original Theater Rhythm on 3DS or iOS. However, this game adds a lot more to make it an incentive to play. There's added online multiplayer, which is a massive deal in a rhythm game. And there's, it's a lot of fun to boot. Yeah, and there's a lot of incentive to keep playing. You can unlock characters, there's songs that you can unlock, different event modes, a whole lot of settings There's you can just, play through. Every time you play a song, you're constantly unlocking more and more and more. There's yeah. enough hooks to keep you playing where yeah. I can't stop playing this game because I'm always unlocking something. Yeah, if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, this is a definite experience. I really recommend you try it out. If you're a fan of rhythm games, it's really fun. If you're a fan of neither, it's really not really the game for you. It's, it's not really yeah. incentivized for you to play. Welcome to Old Game Plus and I'm here again with Gerard for another retro and remake and today we're looking at the Steam release of Colin McRae Rally. Yes and if there's two things I like it's rally games and angry people on the internet and this game has plenty of each. Doesn't it? <laughs> so um, Colin McRae Rally was originally released in the mid 90s on the PlayStation 1 
and it was the defining rally game. It was a realistic rally game other than a power slider like Sega Rally and V Rally and that kind of thing. Yeah, very technical driving. Speed into the corners really mattered. Uh, you, you couldn't just hurtle around the track. Um, and the driving was a lot of fun. And this this game, the re-release on Steam, actually it still captures that. It's still the same sort of driving um, with a few differences. Uh, you've only got one car on the track now instead of multiple cars and there's no weather, there's no mud, there's no snow. But the driving's still intact. It's just still Colin McRae driving. So, and the original did have changing weather and also repairing your car in between tracks. Yeah, damage the cars. Uh, back then, manufacturers were very unhappy with damage the cars. Colin McRae was a rare game that, that allowed that to happen. Um, and the repairing, you sometimes didn't have enough time to repair your car fully before you had to go to the next race. Now, let's talk about the angriness on the internet. Why are they, the people angry? Like, it looks the same. Yeah, me. well, uh, the cars and the tracks look good. Uh, the, you can tell the trees and the people on the side of the track are cardboard cutouts. Um, you don't have other cars on the track, but your worst enemy is the scenery. If you uh, hit it with the top front corner of your car, you're going to come to a dead stop and that sort of thing. But that's how rally games were back then. And that's, that's exactly how the original one was. So Yeah, I think people are forgetting that. Um, yeah. and, and the fact is, it does look a lot better um, than it used to. If you go back and play the original Colin McRae like we did, it's pretty blocky yeah. these days. I think some people are remembering the things a little bit nice. The really, like, big pixels and yeah, stuff giant. like that. Yeah, giant. <laughs> giant. Um, and, and as I said, if you look past all that, the driving in this game is still Colin McRae driving. It is technical. It is fun. You get up to the Corsica tracks. It is really enjoyable. Um, fans of uh, hurtling uncontrollably around the place will, will really be happy to find out there's a Stratos to unlock in there. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. I like Over, overly powered rear-wheel drive car on... on all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's good. Um, and and uh, also, uh, fans of Vuva Zaylas are in for a treat because uh, <laughs> uh, wait till you play it. They're all over the place. So, really? Um, yeah. So, um, uh, would you um, would you recommend the new version or the old version? I, I, I prefer the old. I like I like games with weather. Um, they haven't really done it since the PS One era. Even Forza and the modern G Gran Turismo's don't still don't have weather. So I like the weather. I like the more um, technical aspect of the original. What about you? Uh, look, I'm pretty happy with the new version. If, if you really, uh, it's, uh, you can't get a refund anymore, that, that offer expired for all the angry people. Um, but if you really want to, don't want to take a risk, wait till it's on sale. But I definitely recommend trying the new version of Colin McRae Rally. Hello and welcome to Planeswalker Plus. I'm your host, Alice Clark. This week we are looking at dual decks, specifically speed versus cunning. Uh, dual decks are pretty cool because they're great for casual players. You don't have to build a deck, you can just play with someone straight out of the box and you don't have to worry, ooh, is their deck going to be better than mine? Because they're really well matched. So it's all about your skill and just how much fun you want to have. So I'm going to play with Liam, our lovely and handsome producer, and let's I see how this goes. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Dual decks are pretty fun to play. Yeah, they're my favourite form actually, because uh, I don't really love deck building. I love playing and destroying people. So I think I am cunning and you are speed? Yes. Okay. Which is not great for my usual um, strategy, because my strategy is to play and hope the other person thinks that I suck and just forget to do anything until I have an overwhelming force of creatures and kill them. Well, th that is a creature deck. Uh, lots of hasty creatures, which mm -hmm. is good. Which we I think mine is sort of like, I will bounce your guy and get some tempo advantage mm. and slowly, hopefully win that way. So I should look out for bouncing and you should look out for my giant 7-2 with haste. That's not going to be fun. No, but luckily, apparently really easy to defend given it's a 7-2. I'm going to play a tapped land, which has three colours. Yours. I'm going to draw. I'm going to play a planes and an infantry veteran. Okay, so that does some stuff. Yep, it's a 1-1 one, one and target attacking creature gets plus one, plus one till end of turn if I tap it. Awesome. Okay, um... I am just going to play a land and bust it. Cool. and I'm going to play a morph spell where it's a creature, it's a 2-2 creature face mm. down and I can pay the cost to turn it face up anytime. And the cost is 
something I know and you don't. Ha. Ha. Your turn. I think the correct term is actually ha ha di ha ha. Just for future reference. Yes. I'll keep that in mind. Yep, do. My next step, I'm going to play my frenzied goblin. Okay. And then I'm going to attack you for one. I am going to flash in, because it's very cunning, a 2-4. I'm going to block that. Wah, 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 wah. Did you guys see how cunning that was? Really cunning. If you say the word cunning one more time, you'll be hit in the head with your hat. I pay four and it cast more lands on the table. Lightning Angel, which mm -hmm. is a three four with flying vigilance and haste. Okay. I'm just gonna cry a little bit inside. I'm gonna move to combat. And I'm gonna kill your hookmaster. Boom. Dead. Either before or during combat. I don't care. That's Either way it does not deal damage to you. But these guys will, and I will deal five to you. And I will cry quietly in a corner and take that five. The interesting thing to note at the lock totals at the moment is mm. I'm on 14 and you're at 11. I think that is interesting to note, but I think what is even more interesting is screw you. Yep. Yeah. Um, a pass turn. Thank you. Ah, suddenly the strategy of this deck is revealed to me. It all makes sense. It does all make sense. It was Earth all along. I'm playing Beetleback Chief. Yep. And when he entered the battlefield, I get two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. Guys, I don't know if you can see this, but this card is the card that I should have played just then instead, and then not played these ones. And then done that later. But now I feel like I'm revealing too much, so... Well, I can't see okay. it, but... Okay, I'm tapping a draw. I'm going to be eternally disappointed. Krenko Mob Boss. Ah. Krenko is like a commander favorite, because he makes lots of goblins. I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. I don't think it is. I think we may have to play again, so like make it best of three. What I'm going to do is, in your end step, I'm going to flash in a 3-3 flyer. Ah. Fairy invaders. Well, I think, I'm screwed. Yeah, because I think I'm going to untap. And I'm just going to, you're on five, and I'm just going to attack with my two flyers. Yeah, and then I'm just going to die. Good game, man. Yeah. Best um, of three? Sure. Excellent. So that's it. We play two more games and oh, what nail biters they were. They were really, really thrilling in the way that I was still on 20 and Liam was dead and that's all that mattered. And we, we just need to remember forever, Liam lost. We've had a lot of fun. We're gonna keep on playing. We'll see you next time. So the big alpha release on the 31st, not the big release, which is a Which bit we sad. were originally expecting, yeah. mind. Yeah, um, but I I'm really keen for it. I hope I get in mm -hmm. because I had so much fun with this game. Because you've played it at E3, haven't you? Yeah, uh, we got to play against some foreign media teams yeah. and playing as the monster was so much fun. Playing as the Kraken, mm. um, they did show off the other, one of the other monsters in, the, in this trailer. Yeah. Um, so it's looking pretty good. I but really can't wait to play. did you win though? Yes, I stomped them. It was great. Perfect. <laughs> Preserving the new game plus brand overseas. Yes. I got to play it at EB Expo and I had the same experience as you. I was like, it was great to team as one of the humans to have three people, other people who knew what they were doing to all take on the monster, to all defeat the monster. It was like, assuming that you can get a steady party of friends to stick with this game, I can't imagine that having a sort of long tail. But yeah. at the same time, though, you do. It is 
unmultiplayer online game. You do need to have people with it. Otherwise, you're playing with strangers, which sort of doesn't have the same appeal. Yeah. I think um, all the people that were into Left 4 Dead mm. had that team of four will definitely get into this game as well. Mm. The toys to life genre is here to stay, Jamie, so it's... we might as well embrace it. Yeah, I'm happy to embrace it in this brave brand new future. And Disney are very much embracing it as well with Disney Infinity 2.0 Marvel Super Heroes. Now, if you're not familiar with Disney Infinity, you basically need to know about these. These real world figurines that you can then put onto a base which allows you to play these characters inside the game itself. It's all rather cool technology. And indeed, with the most recent addition, you do get an Avengers pack. You get Black Widow, you get Iron Man, you get Thor. I mean, people, characters you'd want to play as. Exactly. Especially the Scarlet Johansson, you know, Black Widow who, yay. And you get to tour around in the Avengers world. And this is where the game kind of falls a little bit for me. I mean, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, they've added combat and skill trees, which are really cool additions, especially considering the fact the original game had none of that. No, it did not. But the combat itself just feels... It's a good start, but it mm. feels like it's just, it's not there. There's no depth to the system. It is a lot of mashing triangle, especially if you're playing yeah. as the bigger characters like Thor and the Hulk. And the actual gameplay of the, the Avengers. Avengers world is a little bit too repetitive, a little too generic. It's all open world, but you're ultimately performing a lot of fetch quests. I mean, you're performing be... a lot of just getting to here missions. To be fair though, it is still re it's still very sure, which is, is some solace though. Yeah, and there are moments where the procedural open world nature of the game does sort of shine when you're just biking around the world or just flying around the <laughs> Avengers universe as Thor. It's kind of cool. Exactly, and not to mention the other two sets they've got for Spider-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy are also really fun. If anything, they're probably worth checking out more than the starter pack, which say what you will about that. And it sounds like they do deviate from the Avengers game pack in terms of the sort of core gameplay mechanic. Mm. It focuses more on platforming. Like the Guardians it? focuses way more on platforming considering you're playing as the Guardians of the Galaxy who can't fly or don't really have super strength. So not a thing, nothing that the Avengers really have. Mm. But ultimately, this is only half of this infinity. We're ignoring the other half here, which is the toy box. Which is a major improvement over that original toy box. There's it's, it, gets you, it gets you into the game much faster now. There's more procedural generation, there's more templates, there's more just... There are more tools now that kind of get you in there and making, making levels as, as quickly as you can. And that's not getting into the interior stuff, which is a whole nother story in its own right. I look at all this, I acknowledge that it is a powerful tool, and I see the community creating these levels which are cool to play through, except I do not have a creative bone in my body. I'm a complete consumer of all this content. You are the problem with every single user-generated video game ever made. So, ultimately, my enjoyment of Disney Infinity 2.0 in the months, and possibly even years to come, will ultimately depend on how good the community can get with this new powerful set of tools and the new toy boxes that come out. I really, again, look, I think at the moment the, to the set's it's, it's powerful enough as it is, and I would love to see what people do with it. I think the only thing I want more is just a better way to track specific creators and levels, because there's no real way to do that. So, who knows, that could be patched in, it could be for Disney Infinity 3, who mm. knows. I'm kind of just hoping that they do improve on the gameplay in future editions of Toy Box for Disney Infinity 2.0 because at the moment it's all sort of ad Disney infinitum. Hey? Hey? You deserve that. I really did. Now I love Disney, but it mm. looks like it has little big planet syndrome where like I don't have a creative bone in my body, so I wouldn't be able to do anything with like the toy box mode, so I, I don't know. So, but how about the single player mode? Would there be any sort of Disney franchises that would compare you to the single player mode? Uh, I don't know, like, Not, there, there's a few yeah. favourite Disney movies. Like your Lion Kings, your Aladdins. Yeah, but I can just boot up Aladdin, the old PC game, and grab some apples God. and stuff. Oh, it's Where a great is game. your childlike sense of whimsy, <laughs> Tim? But speaking of that, um, next week we'll have a child's perspective on uh, Skylanders as well as Disney Infinity. Yes, we'll be recruiting some of the people from Old Game Plus. They have kids. They have kids that like Skylanders, that like Disney Infinity. So that will be giving us that unique perspective on these games because, after all, there's only so much that we as mature responsible, grown-up adults can say about that. Yes. Uh, next week as well, we've got Shadow of Mordor from yes. Pillar. Uh, the, look forward one to that one, big yeah hyped up games of this we'll find out next week if it's worth it or not yep. but we have just come off the back of the armageddon expo we'll have some interviews for you soon but we are also coming up tim pax yes pax Penny australia Arcade expo 
New Game Plus will of course be there in force with a series of panels including our very own streamer Jordan on the Super Ultra Fighting Game Community Panel EX. I hope I got that title right. <laughs> so yeah, come down and see everything FGC related for Australia. It's going to be a very interesting panel. Hmm. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching New Game Plus. Like us on Facebook at New Game Plus TV. Uh, follow our Twitter at New Game Plus TV and our Instagram at New Game Plus TV. Follow us on Twitch at New Game Plus TV. And visit our website where you can find all our episodes, www.newgameplus.tv. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Don. And we will see you next week.